the rules-based order is the impersonification of expediency. There are no rules that apply to those who are making the rules. The rules apply to others and not consistently. The United States also um, habitually always, almost every day, brings up this idea of a rules-based international order. And this rules-based order is, of course, not a concept of international law. It is a U.S. concept in order to basically justify the rules that I think U.S. and NATO are making up as they as they go. And, and it can even be very contradictive between self-determination on the one hand that sometimes um, is, is uh, preferred and uh, sovereignty and, and, you know, the, the legit, like you should never invade any kind, uh, any kind of place. No, it, um, it, it is worthy of. I don't know if you know that there is a wonderful institution in the Islamic Republic of Iran called the Expediency Council, which makes decisions on an expedient basis. Uh, the rules-based order is the impersonification of expediency. There are no rules that apply to those who are making the rules. The rules apply to others and not consistently. And this is a substitute for the liberal democratic uh, order, the liberal international order uh, that came into being after World War II. It is not the same thing. And it is seen by much of the world as an effort by the United States joined by a club of imperialist countries known as the G7 uh, to reinstate arbitrary and capricious standards of international relations that the post-World War II era was supposed to get rid of. Um, the one thing I don't understand, um, still talking about China, is why why is China still bullying the Philippines so much? It would be so easy for China to win a lot of scores and a, and a, and a lot of goodwill with Southeast Asian countries if they just stop the bullying of um, especially the Philippines and also other Southeast Asian nations. Well, what, how do you make sense of this um, of the bullying? Well, I always used to ask Chinese friends why uniquely among the world's great civilizational states, they insisted they would never be a hegemon or behave hegemonically. I would say to them, is this because you know that you probably will uh, be hegemonic when you're powerful? Uh, or is it because you think other people think you will be hegemonic? Or is it because you remember your past when you were the dominant force in Asia and you interpreted in these terms. Um, why do you say this? Um, I think the Chinese policies toward the Philippines are inept. Um, they are, um, uh, I'm not sure they're quite bullying, but they are reactive to those in the Philippines who are trying to get benefits out of the United States by offering bases and other facilities uh, to the United States that would be used against China. Uh, actually, if you look at what the Philippines have done, they have made no commitment to allow the use of any of these facilities against China. They've been very careful not to provide such assurances uh, to the U.S. And to me, it looks like the Filipinos are very cleverly uh, allowing the U.S. to modernize facilities for their use without making a commitment um, to join the US in the US crusade against China. Uh, but the Chinese, um, as I say, um, uh, have not been subtle. Um, they had a champion in the former president, Mr. Duterte, who was not much admired internationally, but who just visited China and was well received as a former chief of state. I think uh, uh, Bon Marcos um, um, is a more complex character with a different China policy that the Chinese find less agreeable, uh, but I don't think they're dealing with it effectively. I agree with you.